Welcome back. Uh, 200 plus points on the Nifty is what we have. 24,831 is where we stand at. Siddharth Vora is now joining us. He's, a head, of, he's head of Quant Investment Strategy and Fund Manager at PL Asset Management. Uh, Siddharth, good, good afternoon. Good to have you with us here. Thanks for your time, Prashant, this side. Today, uh, momentum stocks are taking a bit of a break. I mean, actually, they're taking a pretty large break if you look at it. Uh, check out the uh, Nifty Alpha Index, uh, which is, I mean, which is basically comprised of these names. Uh, you know, that index is down 2.5%, right? Your, your trend and your CG power and so many other uh, names, which are, uh, which are down as we speak. Uh, and uh, the Nifty is up. So, it's, I mean, the underperformance is some almost 3, 3.5%. Three I don't think it's happened in a long time. Are we in, I mean, and you throw in the defense names as well, HAL and BEL and uh, what have you. Are we in for a slightly sharper pullback in some of these very high uh, sort of, uh, you know, momentum names? Uh, what's your sense? <clears throat> so, uh, over the last one month, actually, we made a very, very drastic change uh, in our portfolios. So, uh, we launched our fund in June 2023 and for almost one year, we continue to hold a momentum and value tilt in the portfolio. But over the last one month, we actually moved out of a momentum value tilt and moved into a quality and low wall tilt in our portfolio. So our fund is actually known to uh, switch its investment style based on the market regime. So it's style adaptive in nature. So I think uh, that rebalance has really you know, started working in our favor. And I do believe that there is a very, very sharp case for mean reversion as well. So what we are looking at right now is that uh, if you look at the quality factor and you look at its comparison or like a discount to, from a quality to a value, uh, there is a lifetime high discount between the quality and value factor. So we definitely think that data suggests a strong mean reversion case. Even if I'm looking at my other uh, valuation, uh, breadth, sentiment and volatility indicators, most of them are at cyclical peaks and troughs which again suggests a case of mean reversion. So to deal with all of this, what we have done in our portfolio is created a very tactical defense layer in terms of uh, diversifying the portfolio from our standard 25 stock portfolio to a 50 stock portfolio for the first time. The other thing which we've done is created a 30% uh, exposure to defensive sectors such as consumer, uh, healthcare, and a bit of IT as well. So for the last one year, we were mainly dominated by cyclicals. We've now finally started adding non-cyclicals as well to the portfolio. Uh, Siddharth, afternoon, Rima here. So how long does this tactical shift, you know, play out? Uh, so for instance, how quickly before, you know, this mean reversion takes place? Is this a two month, three month? Because you've got to be very agile and not all retail shareholders will be. Uh, to give up, put, you know, put your strategy into context with some timelines so, or in uh, terms of some levels or, go ahead. Sure. So we follow a two monthly rebalance cycle in our portfolio. So every two months we review all the market models, the risk models, the macro models, style models and sectoral regime models to decide how the portfolio must be tweaked across any of these dimensions. And the last rebalance was the fifth time in the last 18 years where we got a switch into a dual portfolio. So rather than following a single style or a single regime, which was value momentum, we have now divided 50% of the portfolio to value momentum and the other 50 to a quality low wall. And I think this is quite a rare occurrence to happen. As I said, five times in the last 18 years. So every two mm. months we rebalance. And at the end of two months, if this continues, mm. we continue holding the same strategy. If the data suggests that we need to realign again, we will rebalance and tweak some aspects of the portfolio once again. Mm. So that's and uh, this you're describing uh, I mean, at, at the PMS, uh, all strategies are quant strategies or uh, is what you're describing primarily for one of the quant strat strategies? So, uh, as a group, uh, we pivoted out of active money management and into a pure play quant asset manager close to two years back. So now we're running three strategies. All of them are 100% pure quant driven. Okay, got it. Just wanted that clarity for our, for our viewers. Now, with what you described, and you know, these terms, these days, the definitions also change so much. A month, uh, a year back, 
what was value is now momentum slash growth and you know these these terms are it's not cast in stone anymore and it could change in in a matter of months so yes. therefore now i'm going to talk sectors right so let's say if you've got something like um, uh, you know capex defense capital goods this whole basket which has been just zooming ahead and many of them are psu stocks as well uh, wh how, what do you call them now is that momentum for you erstwhile value etc and basically what is the positioning on them so i'll give you your take on quality and value it's very interesting and actually we have been seeing this and communicating it to our investors as well so the erstwhile value factor is no more value the actual value is in the quality factor as i said the discount between quality and value as a factor is at cyclical highs which means quality has never been cheaper as a basket and value has never been more expensive as a basket so the there is actual value in the quality factor having said that uh, uh, we've reduced our exposure to industrial scab goods defense that whole pack from a 38% exposure say one month back to a 26% so we've cut that exposure by 12% and that's moved to healthcare now so we've created a layer of defense in the portfolio as i'm saying as i'm saying we do perceive some sort of mean diversion in the markets as well so 12 months we perceived the markets to be in a risk on mode now we are perceiving the markets to be in a risk transition mode mm. Hi, Sid. Good afternoon. Good to see you again. Hey. So you're moving some money out of industrials to healthcare. You want to categorize healthcare because that's a very, very large segment out there. How you all playing it? Uh, you know, no uh, diagnostics it... and hospitals. It's just the pharma names. Oh, just the pharma names. All right. Yes. Uh, but what about uh, you know? If you could give us a sense on the banking names, how you all positioned out there? Because there's been that raging debate over there uh, on banks that yes, there is valuation comfort, but there's a split verdict whether the PSUs have more fuel in the system. How are your position over there? So uh, right now we don't own uh, any private banks in the portfolio, and as of now, not even PSU banks. In the last twelve month, uh, we've had a healthy around twenty-two percent odd financial exposure. But in the last twelve months, we've not even owned a single private bank. So we've created significant alpha from our financial exposure, but we've mainly owned PSU banks, PSU NBFCs, and all the capital market plays. So just to give you a few names that we've owned in the past, no more own them. It's been BSC, PFC, REC, uh, Nippon India Asset Management, HDFC, AMC, Motila, Loswal. These have been some of the names that we've owned in our portfolio. We've already exited them, I would say, uh, two, three months back. So we no more own them. But this is how we've played our financial exposure through a set of diversified financials, I would like to call them, rather than the traditional private banks. Mm. Uh, so that uh, you know, in terms of your published portfolio, can you would you can you just give us the flavors, the sort of top five, uh, top five or six holdings right now? So uh, the good thing or the more differentiated aspect of our portfolio is that we run an equal weighted portfolio. So there is nothing like top five. I could just tell you my top five performers rather than my top five holdings, right? And in terms of our sectoral mix, we have autos at around 28% of the portfolio, which covers the ancillary pack and the automobile OEMs. Uh, we have industrials at close to 26, uh, yeah, 26 percent is industrials, healthcare at 12 percent, consumer at another 16 percent, and IT at 4 percent. That's the broad breakup of the top five sectors that we're owning right now. I forgot real estate. Real estate is at seven and a half percent as well. And 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 which are which are each? What's what's the? Uh, I mean, a name each from each of these uh, spa, uh, sectors. So that. So I'll tell you some of the big winners in the industrial spec have been uh, Cochin Shipyard, uh, Mazgaon Dock, GRSE, G Shipping, HAL. These have been uh, some big names. From the auto pack, we've had Bajaj Auto, Hero Moto, M and M, Maruti. These have been some of the big names that we've been owning. In real estate, we have Oberoi, Loda, NBCC, and uh, in MRF also in the auto pack. Sure. Yeah. Uh, in in uh, that that uh, defense uh, industrials, uh, lastly defense name, not defense, I mean shipbuilders, etc. What are you doing with those now, uh, Siddharth? So as I said, we were owning uh, four percent to each of them one month back. We've now pruned the allocations, booked significant profits, and the allocations are now down to roughly two percent each. So we booked significant profits in all these stocks, which we've been holding for a good six, eight months in our portfolio. 
So, Siddharth, so just to conclude, and again, I'm going back to, you know, slightly more academic question. Uh, for a lot of quant strategies, momentum is a very important factor. And as long as you have a trending market up or down, I mean, quant strategies work pretty okay, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. But as a house, what's the call that you're now tra taking? Are you expecting this to get into a bit of a ranging market? Because you mentioned, and that's the, therefore, the, the changing positions that you're taking. Right. And, you know, as as an overall strategy, is it uh, value, quality, momentum? What's the overarching theme that defines the three of the strategies that you discussed today? Sure. So, uh, firstly, momentum is usually an important factor for quant strategies. But in the fund that we're talking about today or the strategy we're talking about today, which is Aqua, it's actually a style agnostic and style adaptive strategy, which means momentum is just one of the factors we look at with not more than 20% weightage in stock selection. But based on the cycle we're in, the weights of the different factors changes. For example, right now, quality and low wall are the most dominating factors in our portfolio, followed by value and then momentum. So... Till December, momentum was the dominating factor. Post-December, value and momentum became dominating factors. And now quality, low wall are becoming dominating factors. So we are not focused only on momentum to drive returns. Sometimes we focus on alpha generation on the upside. Sometimes we focus on risk-adjusted returns like we are doing now. In Fair terms enough. of style orientation, uh, as I said, first time in... Uh, in the last one year and fifth time in the last 18 years, there is a regime split, which means what our models are trying to tell us is they neither have conviction that value momentum regime will continue like it did for the last roughly two and a half years. Neither do they believe fully that quality is now the dominating regime, which is why they've given us a, a model portfolio which splits equally across both of them. So 25 stocks. From the quality low wall pack, 25 stocks from the value momentum pack, all given an equal 2% weight. So it's a 50 Got it, got it. Got it. So your models are telling you that we are at crossroads in this market. Interesting. <laughs> we, we are going to remember that and uh, look forward to uh, discussing this in the future as well. Thank you for joining in today. Well, that's a view from...